Well, thank you so much for keeping it KTN Farmers TV. You're still watching the Get It Right show with me, Jacqueline Kemunto. And today we are with Noah and we are talking about capsicum farming. Now, Noah, tell us about uh, the $1 million that you won <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, how did you go about it? Was it about farming? Tell us about that. Tell us that story. Interesting. Uh, so this, uh, it was not, it, it did not start as the, as, as the $1 million. <laughs> it started uh, otherwise. Uh -huh. So what happened is that I think as I was doing my normal farming, uh, I faced some challenges. And one of the challenges that uh, I faced was, uh, I was given a contract to plant cabbages. So when I planted these cabbages, I did, I did what I thought was the best. And uh, it came out very well. But now these cabbages were a blessing in disguise. Uh, sometimes I still wonder whether to say it was the, it, it was the result of the Africa, that, that gave us the Africa Farmers Club or the other way. But it really motivated me uh, first. I saw the cabbages. But the person who contracted me didn't show up. Wow. So I was stuck with 75,000 cabbages. I did not know what to do with the cabbages. I did not know, I used to take cabbages every day in the, to the house and I was told, uh, hey, these ones are too many now. <laughs> I, I did not know how to sell the cabbages. Mm. When I t asked somebody how much cabbages are, what they told me is that they can only buy at three shillings, you know? And I asked myself very many questions, you know? But one of the things that I really, uh, that really uh, made me think about being a, an African farmer is the fact that I thought I could bounce back, probably I was still young. But what about this farmer who that was everything for them? You know, that was totally everything they have, you know, and that, that, hence the reason why we are hearing farmers uh, in India committing suicide, because these are the, some of the challenges that, that, that we're facing. In Africa is the same. Some just now abandon the farm and just forget about farming again, you know. But uh, what happened is that I didn't give up. I told myself I would like to see how can I have fellow farmers around me sharing information. Because I knew definitely it was because I did not have the right information. That's why I, it was not a failed crop. It was more of a failed market, you know. And I did not know where to complain. You know, it was a signed contract, I didn't know where to complain. And so what happened is that I said, and I had interns, I remember that I had two interns, one, and, and we, I talked to them and we agreed, and we, we said, okay, let's start a group. You know, let's start a group. First of all, it was a small WhatsApp group, but it didn't work very well. But after that, you started the Africa Farmers Club group on Facebook. And so what happened is that uh, when, Facebook, when, when uh, we gave ourselves a target that said between Machakos County and Kajiado County, at that time there were no counties, to just uh, the Machakos and Kitengela area, we can be able to have at least 1,000 1, to 3,000 farmers where we can share agronomic support, we can share market information, we can share just the life of a farmer, you know. Uh, but within the three months that we had set, we had already got 16,000 farmers. Wow. So when this 16,000 farmers, I remember I asked myself, what am I going to do with these farmers, you know? So I kept on posting, farmers kept on posting and just sharing the information, sharing the ideas and what, what, whatever, whatever challenges that they're facing as well as opportunities that are there. But now uh, the group started growing and grew very fast. And uh, fast forward a few months and I was uh, selected as the resident of the Facebook Community Leadership Program, which was an award that came with a million dollars as well as leadership training. And uh, hence the reason now why we have transformed from just a, an online digital group uh, where now we stand at 140,000 uh, farmers across Africa uh, who are digital, digitally connected. But we also have more than 200, around 150 to 200,000 farmers who are uh, connected through our satellite farmer program. And so now we've transformed from the group, uh, just the group, to now we have a non-profit organization which is called A-Farmers, which is now helping farmers attain knowledge and grow profits. We are training farmers, we are visiting farmers. Uh, personally, I've uh, visited more than 4,000 farmers over the past three years just to learn from them, to share my uh, ideas. Uh, we also have a pro uh, we're setting up a training and resource center. Uh, one is in Kitengela, the first one, the other one is in uh, close to Namanga. So we are setting it up, making sure that farmers can be able to come and get this knowledge practically. You know, farming is very practical. Yes. So they have to come and see how do you prune a tomato, you know. Mm -hmm. We are focusing a lot on the youth, young farmers mm -hmm. and women as well. Uh, why, why the youth is because we are working with the youth who are already in agriculture. 
We have a program that is currently running, uh, it's called the Satellite Farmer Program. So this Satellite Farmer Program, we work with farmers, members of the Africa Farmers Club and also other selected farmers, where we give them inputs for, uh, for one season. And then we help them, not only the, the fertilizer and seeds, but also we are looking at giving them uh, agronomic support which is more important than even the seeds themselves because you, somebody has to show you first of all how do you test your soil. That brings me to the question about market access when you're talking about capsicum. It's a um, high value kind of crop that grows under very minimal time, like three months. Uh, how does the market look out there for, let's say, the local market and also international markets that those who are growing for export? How does the market look out there? I can confidently say there's market for capsicum. What the challenge is, is that the price fluctuates. But if you are going to the market, what I really advise farmers, and what I've seen fellow farmers, what I've learned myself from other farmers is, be consistent with the market. Make sure if you want to do a crop that is, and to get a regular market, be consistent with the crop. Make sure you have capsicum on your farm very regularly. Reason being that when the, when the prices are low, which is like, like probably three months in the year, three or four months in the year tops, uh, the buyers will still buy from you. When the price is high, they will still buy from you. But you don't want to do a crop, then you have to wait for another three months for you to go and start looking for market again. So what are the future projections for capsicum farming in Kenya? Where do you see uh, this kind of farming going with regards to even your mentorship programs where you're mentoring even the youth to venture into agriculture? Where are you seeing, where are you seeing us going with these kinds of farming? And also talk about other value crops that can uh, farmers can uh, maybe get into. Capsicum is good, uh, though very sel uh, not all farmers plant it. Uh, in terms of projection on how far it can continue, I think, I think it's taking a very big share. Uh, reason being, if you look at, if you visit uh, the Mamamboga in the kiosks, if you visit the common markets, if you go to the supermarket, you'll always find capsicum. You know, so they make sure that at least the variety you're growing as a farmer is a variety that uh, helps you reduce the cost of production. Uh, what I really uh, uh, say is that don't start with a very big acreage. Start small, you know, start small, uh, have a consistent crop. For example, you might not, you do not have to start with even a whole acre of capsicum. You can start with a quarter of an acre. After one month, after you ready, when you're transplanting, then sow the other one, you know. Uh, this gives you the consistency in the market. Still keeping with market access, uh, are there avenues for value addition? For capsicum, I have not seen a lot of value addition. Uh, what, what I have seen is that now, depending on the variety, I've talked a lot of the green variety, but we also have the colored variety, the red, uh, yellow. I've seen in some instances even some orange ones. Uh, those ones are good for, the higher, for, 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 for different markets, you know. They're good for salads. So as you do this, uh, again, uh, value addition for capsicum, I've not, I've not really mastered it. Uh, because most people prefer it raw, because it can blend in with salads, it can blend in with different things, yes. As you come to the, the conclusion of today's interview, maybe what are the other um, sentiments you'd like to add about capsicum farming and your message to the general public with regards to capsicum farming? Should they venture? Is it a lucrative venture that they can uh, maybe embrace? I'll, I'll, rem I'll remove the lucrative part from that sentence. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, a very, it's a worthwhile venture to, to get into, especially as a farmer. Uh, you can mix uh, capsicum farming with tomato and onions because when buyers come, they want to. They want. They'll ask you, do you have capsicum? Do you have tomatoes? Do you have uh, onions? And that becomes easy to deal with different buyers. Even if you are to uh, deal with a, a grocery or the mamambogas, they would want like a one-stop shop. You know, uh, one thing uh, I advise farmers is identify your market, the, the, the targeted market. But look at, look at varieties that can be able to uh, add resistance to, to, uh, to the diseases. Uh, test your soil is very important because if you do not test your soil and you happen to, to get fusarium wilt or bacterial wilt, you, you lose your old crop. That is quite educative. Uh, thank you so much, Noah, for making time to join us today on the Get It Right show. We hope to have you in more of our shows so that you can also keep educating farmers 
on the correct uh, procedures they need to follow when it comes to farming of various agricultural uh, products. Thank you for having me, Jackie. Uh -huh. So that has been the Get It Right show for you this week. And today we were talking about capsicum farming. I hope you've learned a lot. Uh, the main message that most experts and uh, farmers that you have in this program keep uh, mentioning is the importance of testing your soils. And that has been the Get It Right show for you this week. I'm still your host, Jacqueline Kemuncho. Until next time, goodbye.